Welcome to Virtual Wisdom Finance and Accounting Tutorials. My name is Peter and I'll be your host in this particular tutorial. Today, I want us to look at working capital management. So what is this working capital management? Working capital management refers to the management of the current assets and the current liabilities of a given organization at a given period of time. On day-to-day -day basis, an organization is supposed to ensure that they have the required ratio of the current assets compared to the current liabilities. And the recommended ratio of uh, current assets to current liabilities is 2 is to 1. That is, the current assets are supposed to be twice the current liabilities. That is, to, for the company to be on the safer side, for the company to, ha to, to have a, a good liquidity ratio. That is, if your creditors come claiming for payments, you are able to pay them and remain with a similar portion of cash that will ensure that your business is a going concern in the future and that means that this particular topic is very critical when it comes to the management of the funds of a given organization specifically today i'm going to look at how to set an optimal cash balance optimality means that amount of cash that is enough for you be able to be able to take care of day-to-day -day activities of a given organization. For example, if your organization spends 10,000 in a day, there'll be no need for you to hold 20,000, 30,000 within the organization because that will be holding too much cash that is not that is not needed in the organization at that time. What you need is 10,000 and therefore you can hold either slightly higher amount that is maybe 12,000 or even slightly lower based on how much specifically you spend in a given day but not holding twice that amount of money and that is what we mean by optimal amount of cash that you need in an organization at a given time there are various methods of determining the optimal cash balance and we have one the bomul's model two the miller or model and we have three the cash budget in my previous tutorial i have already looked at the bomul's model you can look at uh, my previous tutorials and you'll find this content they are very useful number two i'm going to focus today or in this particular tutorial i'm going to focus on the miller o model the miller o model is a probabilistic or we can call it a stochastic model that was developed by two guys that is uh, Martin Miller and Daniel O. And that gives the name of the model. That is the mirror and we have the O. That is where the name of this particular model comes in. And this model is normally based on the assumption that the distribution of daily net cash flows is approximately normal. That is, any given organization spends a given amount of cash on daily basis. If, for example, the previous example I had given, if your organization spends 10,000 every day, then it means they can either spend slightly higher or slightly lower on of that given amount. And that is the assumption that this particular model gives, that it is approximately normal at any given, any given day. We can express this model using a graph, and uh, here is the graph that we are going to express the Miller O model. And what we are saying is, the third amount that the organization knows that at any given time, we normally spend this particular amount of money. That amount is what we are calling the target cash balance, right? That is what you need on day-to-day -day basis. For example, if your target cash balance is 10,000, that is the amount that you need to be able to settle all your requirements fully at any given time. Then what will happen is that at any given time, you should work towards ensuring that you don't hold more than 10,000 and you don't hold less than 10,000. So what do you do? You normally set a higher limit. That is a limit above, which we call H or the upper limit. Yeah, the amount that you should not exceed, you should not exceed that particular amount at that given time. Let's take, for example, if you have set your higher limit at 20,000, right? 
then you also set a lower limit that amount that you cannot go beyond downwards the least amount of cash that you can hold at any given time let's set a limit here it let's take for example a limit of 5000 right that is what we call the lower limit our y axis here represents the cash balance and the x axis here represents the number of days now let's see what happens what happens if you for example if you have in 10000 and uh, your business is uh, busy you have some sales you have some people paying their debts so you're receiving some cash what will happen if your amount increases to point a here and point a is where you are saying now you're having what twenty thousand. you don't need all this money so what do you do you have to dispose of some amount so that you can go back to the target cash balance what is this amount that you need to dispose of how do you dispose of what do you do you go to the securities exchange and buy some marketable securities that is short-term marketable securities the reason why you go for short term because in case you don't get more cash you can easily sell them off and be able to get this money back so you're going to buy marketable securities worth ten thousand when you buy marketable securities when then ten thousand your amount is going to drop back to 10,000. You have already disposed of 10,000 so that you get back to your normal amount or your target amount of 10,000. Now, what will happen again if your amount decreases, if it goes down to the lower limit here that we had set? Now, instead of you having 10,000, you have in 5,000. What do you do? You are now going because you had previously bought some marketable securities, you go ahead and sell them. So, you're going to sell marketable securities worth. 5000 so that you can increase your amount back to 10000 and that will ensure that at any given time you'll have a target cash balance of 10000 that is how the miller o model is applied now how do you get the target cash balance to get the target cash balance which we are calling z we normally get z by taking 3 multiplied by b multiplied by the variance divided by 4i then everything you put it power a third putting it power a third is also is like just like saying getting the uh, the cube root of this particular figure and then you add l then to get the higher limit you take 3z you less 2l to get the average cash balance you take 4z you less l then you divide by 3. to get the spread you take the higher limit you less the lower limit so let's see what this item represents the first item here is z and we have already said that z represents the target cash balance that amount of cash that you need at any given time that is our z then l represents L here represents the lower limit, the least amount that you can hold. That if you go to that point, you need to sell off some marketable securities to be able to take you back to, to Z. Then we have B represents the fixed transaction costs. When you are trading in the, in the securities exchange, you're going to incur some costs. For example, you need to pay some agents, maybe some commissions. You need to pay some brokers and all that. So that amount that you spend is the transaction costs associated with that particular transaction, which we are calling B. Then the variance, that is sigma squared, representing the variance. Please note that the standard deviation is what is uh, represented by sigma only <clears throat> that is a standard deviation the variance is represented by sigma squared then we have uh, i here which represents the opportunity cost on a daily basis which is normally given in percentage and please note on daily basis that is very important we have already talked of uh, then we have uh, the h here which represents the higher limit that is the amount the maximum you can hold that if you go to that particular amount you need to uh, buy some marketable securities to take you back to to z so i have already mentioned what z is what l is and uh, the same to this particular formula now having looked at how you obtain the target cash balance 
let's look at an illustration to see how you can be able to apply these or how basically you can solve questions on uh, uh, Bomo, uh, sorry on the miller or model so the illustration reads printex company limited management has set the minimum cash balance to be equal to shillings 10000 the standard deviation of daily cash flow is shillings 2500 and the interest rate on marketable securities is 9% per annum the transaction cost for each sale or purchase of securities is 20 shillings 20 required a calculate the target cash balance b calculate the upper limit c calculate the average cash balance and d calculate the spread now let's try to interpret this question here printex company limited management has set the minimum cash balance to be equal to 10,000. So the 10,000 here represents what? The minimum cash requirements. That is the lower limit, the minimum, the least you can hold at a given time. Then you're given the standard deviation. Then remember standard deviation we have said is given by sigma of daily cash flows is 2,500. So the 2,500 here is the standard deviation. That means what? We need to get the variance. We don't have the variance here. We have been given the standard deviation. Then, and the interest rate on marketable securities is 9%. That is the interest rate on marketable securities, which we have called I. The transaction cost for each sale or purchase of securities is 20. So anytime they trade these securities, they spend what? 20 shillings which we called our b or the the opportunity uh, sorry the fixed cost of the transaction so after identifying these items let's look at the solution let's start with part a how do you get the target cash balance we already have the fixed cost as 20 then in this particular question we have been given the standard deviation which is 2500 meaning for us to get the variance we need to square the standard deviation square 2500 to get 6 million 250 thousand so our variance is 6 million 250 thousand the lower limit we have already gotten that is 10,000 and the interest we have been given is 9% per annum and from our question remember it's supposed to be given in what the opportunity cost on daily basis right but here they have given that in what in the whole year that is per per annum that means we need to divide this by the number of days in a year so making the assumption that a year has 360 days so we divide nine percent with 360 to get 0 0.00025 that would be our i now replacing that in the formula we have uh, <clears throat> 3 multiplied by, we have 3 multiplied by B, which is 20, multiplied by the variance, which is two, uh, 6,250,000. Then you divide it by 4 multiplied by I, where our I is 0 0.00025. Then everything, you put it power 1 over 3. And uh, remember, we also said, instead of putting power that, you can also find the cube root of this. It will represent power at that it's just like finding the cube root then you add 10,000 which is our L so on working out that you find that uh, you're going to have 375,000 uh, sorry 375 million divided by 0 0.001 everything power at that we have said also you can do the cube root of this instead of putting power at that either way which is simpler for you then you add 10,000. So this is going to give you 7,211. Of course, we have 10,000 here. So you add that to get the target cash balance, which is our Z to be 17,211. Part B. We were told to calculate the upper limit and we say that the upper limit which is h is given by 3z minus 2l we have already gotten our z from our previous illustration here this is our z 17 
2, 11. Now we have Z is that. The lower limit, we had it as 10,000. So you multiply, you represent that in the formula. That would be 3 multiplied by Z. Then you less 2 multiplied by 10,000, which is the lower limit. So when you work that out, you're going to get 51,633. You less 20,000 to get that 1,633 is our higher limit. That is our, our H. Part C, you are asked to get the average cash balance. The average cash balance, as we saw, it is given uh, by this formula here. is given by, sorry for this, there seem to be some bit of error here. Let me just take you back to it a little. We said that to get the average cash balance, you take 4Z minus L, you divide that by 3. So that is 4z minus l you divide it by 3 that l was missing there so on replacing that we already have our z or that is the optimal of the target cash balance which was uh, uh, 17,211 of course we have our l is 10,000 so you replace that and you get uh, the average cash balance is 19,615 then to get the spread, the spread is simply uh, the, the the. Let me just show you from the graph. The spread is basically this distance here, or simply the gap between the higher and the lower limit. How far is the maximum amount from the lower amount? That is what we are calling the spread. And to get the spread, you simply take the higher limit, you less uh, the lower limit, that is H minus L. And we have already seen that our H, which we had gotten it as 31,633 shillings, and our L was 10,000. Subtracting that, you get the spread as 21,633. Now, having solved the three items, let's try to replace them in the in the in the curve or sorry on the in the graph and see what this represents we have already gotten that our target cash balance z was 17211 it means this is what an organization needs to maintain at any given time 17211 then the higher limit or the maximum they can hold is that 1000 to 633 that when this amount gets to here they need to take it back to 17,211. The minimum amount is 10,000. That if they go below to 10,000, they need to get back to this point. So what happens? If they started with 17,211, let's say the amount was somewhere here, then it starts increasing, increasing, increasing to point A, which is the higher limit. They need to buy some marketable securities uh, so that when they buy these marketable securities, which are what the difference between these two figures, they take themselves back here to where they, they are supposed to be, the target cash balance, which is 17,211. Then if this amount decreases to point B, which is the lower limit, they are supposed to sell some marketable securities so that they can get back to these original point that is basically how you apply the miller o model in managing cash i hope this content was useful to you this was a virtual wisdom finance and accounting tutorials thank you for your time and thank you for watching this tutorial kindly make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel so that you can be able to get more tutorials as they come they are free and if you have any queries or you need some clarification or you need uh, to give some piece of advice kindly you can get me through the contact above here thank you for your time thank you thank you once more